Okay, so I'd like to talk a little about the economic theory behind the EI program, and in particular the challenges of evaluating policy because of the dual nature of the program. Um, and then if I have time, I'm going to say a few words about the maternity policies, because that's more on my area of research. And so economists like to frame decisions about policy, starting with the question, why is the government involved in this market to begin with? The market that we're talking about here is the market for um, employment insurance. There's a demand for insurance of employment. People don't like their income to be fluctuating up and down through the business cycle. We'd rather have our income smoothed. And we, so we're willing to give up some now in order to buy insurance. It doesn't have to be in a formal market. You know, we could just save for a rainy day. But uh, it's more efficient to pool the risk across uh, a large group of people, especially when the probability of needing unemployment insurance is low. So there's a demand there. But why is it provided by the government? So there's two rationales that economists, economists use to justify government intrusion in the market. Um, the first is to correct a market failure. So sometimes the market left to its own can create havoc um, and create inefficient outcomes. And so the government has a justification that we can rationale the government's uh, intrusion into the insurance market uh, because of a correction for market failure. And the second is for redistribution. So sometimes the market can be left on its own and it can be efficient, but in the end, the distri distribution of income that we're left with, we as a society don't like, and we'd like the government to come in and redistribute. Now the EI program is interesting because it tries to do both things at once. It's not only a redistribution program, it's also an insurance program. And the goals of those two are very often at, at, at conflict. And so if we're thinking about um, how to change the policy, um, are we thinking about increasing redistribution or, or increasing the welfare of the unemployed? Or are we thinking about creating a more efficient system that creates less distortions in the labor market? And sometimes it's very hard to see what the policy goal is. Um, to see the dual nature of the program, uh, consider the two types of behavior that's common for any type of insurance that has to be addressed. So the first thing that we always see with insurance is adverse selection. So this is the idea that only people who have a high risk of needing the program, needing the benefits, are going to buy in if given the choice. Um, I'm a mid-40s tenured professor. The chance that I'm going to need unemployment insurance next year is slim to none. The chance that I'm going to need maternity benefits are even less than that. And so if given the choice, I wouldn't be buying into employment insurance. My brother works for Ford. He collects unemployment insurance almost every year because he's laid off for a few weeks every year while they do some revision of the plant. Um, and so his probability of needing it is close to 100%. If people like me don't buy into the program, if we had the choice, the program wouldn't exist. It wouldn't, the market would not provide it at the level that we'd like. And so that's a rationale for government intervention in the market. The same way that we see that the government requires us to buy car insurance or house insurance, even though it might not be provided by the government themselves. So there's the adverse selection, and that's a, a rationale for government intervention. The second type of behavior that we need to be concerned with is moral hazard. So this is the idea that if you're insured, your behavior might change. So if I have health insurance, I might behave in more risky behaviors. If I have car insurance, I drive more recklessly. If I have employment insurance, maybe I would engage in behaviors that makes it more likely that I will become unemployed. A pure insurance market takes care of this by creating disincentives for using the program. There's costs to using your car insurance. There's cost to driving recklessly, you get demerit points, and your, your premiums go up. Now this is where the unemployment insurance or the employment insurance deviates from a pure insurance program in that the, there are some costs to using the program. There's a two-week waiting period, which is sort of like a paying a deductible. You can't get the program if you, if you quit your job, you don't qualify. But the, um, the characteristics in place to address moral hazard are much less than would be in a private insurance market. And for that reason, there's a lot of subsidization from employers and employees in stable industries to an employers and employees in unstable industries. And research has shown that this is going from uh, service industries to manufacturing in primary, and from Ontario to the Atlantic provinces and Quebec. 
although that research was from before the last recession, so it's more likely from the west to Ontario now since they were hit quite hard. Um, so this dual nature of the program, the fact that you know it's not quite an insurance program, and it's not quite getting the distribution that we ideally like, it makes it very difficult sometimes to evaluate policy changes. Um, so for example, should we um, increase the generosity of the benefits? Okay, now, would we do that? How, how is that going to affect the labor market? How is that going to affect the ability of people to get jobs or the desire of people to get into jobs? Um, that's going to be one question. Then we also need to ask, um, what are the redistribution impacts? Are we doing this to help the unemployed or are we doing it to help the labor market? Um, so if we increase the generosity of unemployment insurance benefits, sorry, employment insurance benefits, um, this, is, this is likely to have an effect on unemployment duration. Okay? The duration of unemployment is going to go up if you're getting more benefits, if you're allowed to, to get benefits for more than 52 weeks. It's not necessarily a bad thing um, to have that ability to stay unemployed. Right? Um, there's costs and benefits that we have to weigh. On the one hand, uh, there's negative duration. Du du sorry, negative duration. Um, I lost my word here. Duration dependence. Sorry, duration dependence. Where the longer that you're unemployed, the harder it is to find a job. And the main reason for that is that employers look at long-term unemployment as a negative signal. So we don't necessarily want to create incentives for people to stay unemployed longer. On the other hand, uh, there's benefits. We don't necessarily want people to take the first job that comes along. We'd like people to have that cushion so that they can wait for a, a good match. And there's been research to show that that actually reduces the probability of unemployment down the line. So we need to weigh those costs and benefits. And we would do that thinking about the efficiency aspect. Right? But then thinking about redistribution, the welfare of the unemployed, is a separate question. And so as um, for economists, we'd like to separate that. And I think it's important also to ask policymakers when they're uh, presenting a policy, you know, how does this affect the unemployed, but also how does this affect the labor market? How does this affect the um, duration dependence? Another example is whether or not the, the program, the, the conflict between the national program and the provincial programs. Okay, so EI is a national program, uh, social assistance and a lot of the other work pro programs are provincial. This creates some very perverse incentives where the governments are basically playing hot potato with the beneficiaries. So if the federal government reduces the generosity of EI, people then end up off the federal rolls but on the provincial. And at the same time, you can have provincial programs in social assistance where the goal is to get people enough work to qualify for EI. So they get off the provincial rolls and onto the federal. So from an efficiency standpoint, it might be much more beneficial to have one jurisdiction, one level of government running all of this. Uh, but from a distributional standpoint, that might not work. And the reason is because the industries that gain most from EI, those that are most heavily subsidized, are not evenly distributed across the country. They're going to be more likely in the Atlantic provinces in Quebec. And so if we had a provincial system, uh, we're going to lose some of that distributional benefits. Okay? So we, again, we have this tension between distribution and, um, and efficiency. Um, and the last one that I wanted to talk about is the penalties for repeat use. So this is an area that we haven't talked enough about in Canada. Most of the penalties for repeat use, when we do talk about it, we talk about it on the employee side. And there's, they've recently changed the system where you're now put in a category, you're either a frequent user or an occasional user or a, a irregular user. And which category you fall in tells you what type of job you have to take. Okay, so it extends, if you're a repeat user, you have to look farther afield, you have to be willing to take a lower paid job than if you don't use EI very often. So we think about repeat users from the, from the employee side. What we don't think about a lot in Canada is repeat users from the employer side, um, what we call experience rating. This is very common to do in the United States and in Europe. Employers who use EI a lot, who lay off their employees more often, uh, have to pay higher premiums in different in the US and in Europe. 
We don't do that in Canada. Whether you, if you lay your workers off every year for three weeks, or if you rarely lay your workers off, you're paying the same premiums. And so again, we come back to this efficiency and um, distributional question. It might not be efficient for this to happen. It would be much more efficient, much more like a regular insurance program to have experience rating of employers, uh, but then we lose this distributional um, aspect where we're helping out the seasonal industries. We're helping out the manufacturing industries. When we're asking whether or not it, the program is good overall, um, I, I would say as a, given that it has this dual nature, um, it's probably not doing too bad. In terms of the 1 in 100, 180 degree um, turn, I'd actually like to see it split where we actually have an insurance program that is an insurance program that's run more like an insurance program. And then we have the distribution so that we can um, have a separate, more transparent program that's helping out the unemployed, that's helping out um, the seasonal and manufacturing <coughs> industries um, rather than having it grouped together. And then maybe we can get the best of both worlds. And I didn't get time to say anything about maternity, but maybe we'll. You will. <laughs>